Hello fellow podcasters, today we got Confucius Analect, and we're going to talk about a couple things that are in Analect, and a couple, a little bit of an analysis between Eastern and Western philosophy, so let's get right on to it. So basically, um, Confucius' Analect it consists of a lot of different like quotes, basically, from Confucius talking to his disciples or someone, and giving advice, and it's all about like respecting your elders, and, and you know, and true goodness, and creating a good, good world. Basically, that's Confucius' thing. And within within Confucius's writing, there's a couple things that I actually wanted to talk about. So one thing is Confucius says that you need to always uh, adhere to tradition and sort of like be really solid and not change your traditions and your rituals and stuff. And that's a bit really big Chinese thing. And I, I to that I'm like, is change and cultivation always bad? Like, isn't there sometimes don't you need to like break through all those different like cultural and rules and like rituals and all of these like things that have been handed down from the ancient times, of course these are important and they should not be forgotten. However, should should they not be like modified or 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 like at least evaluated and questioned like to, before like people actually do them, you know? And I thought that perhaps only not questioning and thinking that as the ultimate good is not like a good way of logically thinking about things. However, of course, Confucius uh, Confucius does think that you do need to question things. Like, even if your mom and dad says tells you to like jump off a cliff, you're not gonna do that, right? So, like, you should respect your elders. However, you should also at the same time kind of evaluate your own style of thinking and your own style of thinking that is accorded to the way, which is the way that he he thinks would create the perfect person or the perfect gentleman. And yeah, that that's something. And Confucius's version of learning is learning about yourself and learning and trying to kind of be a better person, you know. And so you learn all about all the all these different things, and you become a better person and more respectable person, and be closer to the perfect person or the way, as Confucius mentions. Meanwhile, the Western style of learning is quite literally seeking knowledge, kind of like Socrates or Plato or any of the Western philosophers. They all seek knowledge and they seek truth meanwhile confucius he kind of seeks truth course he he doesn't really question and seek things rather he takes things as they are and respects it and kind of bases up a kind of ethical good person kind of criteria on the culture and on the rituals that are already there based on respect and i think that's the biggest difference and there, uh, I, I, there we have the debate of which which type of learning is correct. And there's a bunch of pros and cons to it. Uh, Confucius's type of learning is uh, is more is more less thinking but more doing. You know, it's like you're actually in the in your life and you're learning about these different things and you're learning on how to live and how you should do this. And in some ways, philosophy is all about that. However, what uh, Western philosophers such as Plato or Socrates, they they thought that. Um, you need to seek, seek knowledge out. You need to find the ultimate truth. Of course, all of the different philosophers have different versions of this, but that's pretty much the gist of a lot of Western philosophers. And basically, it's about seeking knowledge versus seeking yourself. And the good parts about that is you have a wider, gen- more general worldview. However, it's less personal. You know, it's less connected to uh, real-life situations, and it's more theoretical rather than physical. And that's the comparison that I wanted to make. And a couple quotes that uh, I'll just talk about a couple quotes within within the text. Um, so actually, I'm pretty sure like the first, the, pretty much the first quote is like based is the basis of one of the things that I talked about. The master said, "To learn and then have occasion to practice what you have learned is this not satisfying? To have friends arrive from afar." Is this not a joy? To be patient even when others do not understand. Is this not the mark of a gentleman? This kind of shows Confucius' entire concept of learning. Like I mentioned, he thinks learning is learning how to live and learning how to be a good person and getting close to this gentleman or kunza in Korean or in, in Chinese. Um, uh, getting close to that ideal that he set as an ethical good person. And another another really really big thing that is basis of Confucius philosophy is one point two of the first book, uh, the second quote of the first book, and it says, "Master, you said a young person who is filial and respectful of his elders rarely becomes the kind of person who is inclined to defy superiors, and there has never been a case of one who is disinclined to defy superiors serves stirring up rebellion." 
The gentleman applied himself to the roots. Once the roots are firmly established, the way will grow. May we not say the filial piety and respect for elders constitute the root of goodness. Basically, Confucius' philosophy is pretty much based on that respect of elders and respect for the culture and respect for the rituals. And basically, it's built up on that how, like, if a, if a person, at the very least, basically has that respect for their uh, parents and has that respect for um, rituals and does these faithfully with a good heart, then obviously he's going to do good in society and he's going to be a good person in society as well. So yeah, that that's pretty much Confucius' entire thing. Of course, I haven't read the entire thing. I've read like most of it, so I might be missing something. However, that is the two general things that I picked up and uh, general analysis and difference between Western and Eastern philosophy when it comes to Confucius versus like, let's say, Socrates or Descartes. And that's pretty much it. Like always, your plot cluster and the plot cluster quick little review. And have a great day.